What is going on guys? Coach Joe here at Garage De La Swole and in this video we're going to be covering grip training 101. So I've been obsessed with grip for probably almost a year now, but I'd say more so the last six to eight months. I've been focusing on grip training, have a lot of success lately in those six to eight months and I wanted to share kind of my philosophies and anything that has to do with grip training. I know it's a very nuanced and big topic. I'm looking forward to making more videos about it to dive deeper, but I wanna give a brief overview on kind of just the basics, like I said, types of grip, why I'm training grip, and then how I'm doing it laid out in a weekly format. Before we get to it, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, check out all the other videos on the channel. I've been putting out consistent content recently. I'm seeing the subscriber count go up and that gets me freaking fired up but we also have a thousand videos on the channel and just a cool journey to see where i started to where i'm at today providing you as much value and content to help you along your journey so why am i focusing a lot on grip training well first of all it's a huge weakness of mine especially in the sport of strongman i do very well when it comes to static events and moving events however Moving events that cause me issues are gonna be things like farmers. So it's very specific to me to get better at the sport, to increase my grip strength, so that when I do have events such as farmers, I'm not about to poop my pants and cry like a little girl behind the stage uh, before I go out there. Oh, I never cry. But if I do watch the movie Soul, there is a somewhat watery substance that drips down around my eyeball. I don't know, I don't know. On top of that being important for strongman, it's a ton of fun. I've just been enjoying grip training. One of the reasons is you don't have as much pressure or expectations on yourself as you do with main lifts. So you can get a bunch of your buddies, just do some sort of grip exercise, and it's just, you, you tend up having a blast with it. So I really enjoy that part of it. The other thing is it's functional, right? We use our hands and we're gripping things all the time, trying to open freaking pickle jars. And on top of that, I did see a study, if I recall correctly, that typically people with stronger grip end up living longer. So if we start that grip training now or give ourselves some sort of a grip base, it could help us out in the long term. And then on top of that, aesthetics, right? If you ever see a dude who just has meaty, strong ass forearms, man, is he a good looking human being. Also, if you practice jujitsu or you're a wrestler, if you tie up or lock up with some dude who's got you know, just freaking 18 inch pipes. More often than not, that's a, just a terrible, a terrible and scary individual that you're about to face. Now the how, okay? How do we implement grip training with our regular resistance training protocol? And honestly, you can add it in as much or as little as you'd like. And typically you're gonna work on those weak areas. So if there's something that you want to increase that you know is gonna be beneficial to whatever sport or whatever lift, Okay, we'll talk about that in the types of grip here in a moment, but you can sprinkle that in throughout your training. It's very easy to do so. I think a lot of people overcomplicate it. And like I said, at the end of this, I'm gonna give you a structure to follow. You don't have to do it exactly as it looks, but it's just a template that you guys can utilize for your own training. Now, when it comes to grip, there's different types of grip. And I'm probably gonna make videos on each of these specifically, but I wanted to cover it just to kind of give you guys some information. If you don't know, there are also a ton of other videos out there that dive deep into just types of grip training and the different principles, ideologies, tools you can use for each. Uh, but we're gonna start off with the most common, that's gonna be support grip. So when you're thinking of straw man and using farmers or doing deadlifts and you know just being able to hold the bar, that's just our general support strength uh, utilizing our grip, okay? So just think kind of going through life or uh, comp specific type stuff or lift specific type strength, that is gonna be all in the support group. So we're talking farmers, we're talking just holds, or we're talking different types of hangs, okay? That falls in that, that category. Now the first accessory grip would be crush grip. So I have an example here of a few things, but these are just the grip genie grippers. So when we have these, we're crushing with all of our might, just like so, okay? So think about just putting something in your hand, maybe like a peach, right? We're trying to crush that peach or, or grab it with all of our fingers wrapped around and we're squeezing and clenching that fist. There's also something like a rolling thunder, okay? That's gonna challenge your crushing grip. Now, the next one we have is gonna be pinch, okay? So think about pinching something with your fingers so here we have an example of using a grip genie hub. Okay, so I'm just using those fingers, 
We have a pinch block. So I'm only allowed to use that pinch grip when I'm picking something up like that. Other crazy feats of strength that I've seen people do is like tearing a phone book or tearing a deck of cards, right? That's heavily going to rely on the flexion of the fingers with that type of grip. After that, we have flexion and extension. So whenever I'm thinking about flexion and extension, right, I'm thinking of flexion of the hand or wrist and extension, I typically think of something like this Grip Genie forearm grower, right? Or if you're doing something like wrist curls, it's gonna strengthen the forearm. So typically, flexion and extension is going to target the meaty part of the forearm uh, when we're doing that type of grip pattern. These two are smaller, but I actually have a lot of fun training these. That's gonna be radial and ulnar deviation. So just a quick example of this would be if I were to put weight on here, sometimes I just slide a five pound plate down this club, I'll hold it down, and all I'm doing is I'm raising it and lowering it. Okay, so we're working on that, that radial and ulnar deviation. And then we also have uh, supination and pronation. So if I took this dumbbell, right, I'm supinating, pronating, tons of different exercises. Typically, you're gonna see a lot of arm wrestlers are very good at a lot of the flexion, extension, radial and ulnar deviation, supination and pronation, uh, and all these other ones just compound to just getting that overall grip stronger. So we will get more specific into these with other videos, but I just wanna give you guys the rundown. And like I said, these would be the accessories to increase that support grip. So obviously you wanna work on the main lifts, which would be maybe your farmers for a competition or something of that nature. Uh, but if you find that using these exercises or increasing these weak points will only make your support or comp lift stronger. Now in a nutshell, I kind of want to go over what are the three big things that have helped increase my grip and just size my forearms. So the other day, I got a freaking vicious pump on my forearms and obviously it was a pump measurement, but I was at 16.5 inch forearm right there. So that's about two inches bigger than it was in the last couple of years. Um, but I would say a large chunk of that was developed in the last six to eight months. And that was due to one, doing more grip specific work. So in the past, typically my only kind of grip exercise would be maybe my accessories when I was using a barbell for my strength training or doing strongman exercise that were specific to the competition. So maybe it's like once or twice a week at most that I was getting some sort of extra grip stimulus. Uh, but I wasn't putting a conscious effort into the grip training itself. The other thing was I started using my straps less and only relied on them more when I needed. Now, obviously, if you're doing hypertrophy training, you're doing like a pull day, for example, straps are great because you need that overload when you have bigger muscle groups like the back uh, so you can actually stimulate them. However, now that I'm in more of a strength phase, when I'm doing any sort of pulling, I try to do all my warm-up sets without straps, and then I'll only use them on the sets that I need them. Now, typically that'll change depending on my training cycle and if a comp is near or it's far, but since I'm pretty far out, I wanna to try to get those forearms and that grip as strong as I possibly can. So I'm lessening the amount of strap work that I do, and then I'll, I'll, I'll strap up or strap on. No, I'm not strapping on. But I will strap up uh, only until I need it. Okay, but you think about all that extra accrued volume over time that your grip is getting, I find that that's just been translating over nicely. I just recently pulled an 800 pound trap bar, strapless, and I held it at the top for a few seconds. Big PR for me, and I just wanna put that in perspective of just increasing the amount of accessory grip work that I've been doing on top of limiting the strap usage. Now the last thing that noticeably has increased my grip strength is gonna be more static holds. Long story short, I got a buddy of mine who is a college football and wrestler, and he's just a high performing dude with what he does for work. And every time I've trained with him, he'd always somehow incorporate a static hold on whatever exercise we were doing. So he really just kind of got me in that vibe that I wanna start doing that more, and I have found huge uh, benefits of that. So what I'll do is either specific, you know, intentional static holds, Say I'm doing like a farmer walk or, or doing the trap bar, maybe I'll hold it at the end of the set for a couple extra seconds. 
So now that I, I kind of laid out some of the, the general whys, the hows, the types of grip, what I've been including, you know, for me personally, that's helped. I'm going to give you guys my current grip template and uh, hopefully you guys can utilize that. All right, so this is kind of a template. And if you guys watch my conjugate program overview, you'll notice how this translates nicely with that. If you haven't watched that video, highly recommend it. It'll make more sense because I break up my whole week of training and then kind of where I throw this stuff in as well. So uh, day one, typically we have no grip training and this is gonna be Monday through Sunday. That's, that's how I follow my training week. So no grip training there, allowing my hands to recover a bit, especially over the weekend. Uh, then day two, I'm gonna focus on crush and forearm slash flexion and extension. Okay, typically on day two and day four, I'm doing my biceps as well. And depending on you know, how I'm feeling, maybe I'll do the biceps first and the grip, or I'll do the grip first and the biceps. It's very auto-regulatory, but you can figure out what you wanna put more focus and emphasis into. Day three, no grip training on that day. And then day four, we're gonna focus on pinch and then supination and pronation. So typically on the supination and pronation, I like doing more arm wrestling type exercises. I've been getting stuff from Devin Larratt. I really like what he does. So I'll throw in some more kind of arm wrestling technique. Maybe I'm using bands or I'm using some sort of strap and we're working that pronation, supination uh, of the grip. Once again, it's another bicep day. Day five, rest day. And then day six is typically when I do a lot of strongman work. Obviously, I'm doing some strongman scattered throughout the week, but we just have strongman Saturdays where we get a group of people here. It's a lot of fun to work on strongman with a group. On top of that, it's even better when you work on grip with a group of people. So I'll typically do support mostly. So maybe that's going to be uh, some sort of carry or like a farmer walk. Uh, and that's where I'm going to do my, my static holds. And then I'm going to do full forearms typically at the end of that session. And then day seven is an off day. On those days, I do like to do uh, extensor work. So I have these bands from Grip Genie that go right on my fingertips and I'll just work on extension because we're doing a lot of crushing and flexing of the hand. I like to work the opposite or antagonistic muscle group there just to give uh, my biceps, my tendons, my wrist, forearm, just a little bit of uh, recovery. And then typically what I'll do is I'll alternate week by week on whether or not when I'm doing crush, I'm gonna do picks and reps or the next week I'm going to do some sort of crush and hold. So it, it gives me a lot of variation if I'm doing, you know, every other week, whether that's going to be a hold or whether that's going to be for reps, uh, just so that I'm fresh and mentally excited to get back after it. And I find for recovery purposes that works pretty well. The other thing with grip in general is it's kind of a way that I manage and regulate my fatigue. So if I notice that my grip is just super smoked, usually that means my systemic fatigue is building up and I'll play around with how many sets or how much volume I'm doing, and I'll usually just cut back, or I'll just cut some of these days out so that my hands and my grip and my overall recovery is increasing so that I'm fresh to hit it for my normal resistance training. So I just use a lot of this grip work as supplemental to my program that I'm doing now, uh, but I weave it in here and there where I'm feeling best about it. So you guys don't have to follow this to a T, you could pick one or two of these days, um, but I do find this is nice because you get to work the different accessory grips as well as your support grip throughout your regular program or on a specific day like I have it here on Saturdays for Strongman. So hopefully this helped, you learned something, whether it was about the different grip types or maybe you got some exercises out of this or even just some sort of foundation that you can play around with. Uh, but. I've just been having a blast. I've noticed really good gains in my forearms, in my grip. It's translating over nicely to just everyday life, just doing things, as well as the sport of strongman. Uh, so if you like the video, once again, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. We have a ton of ways you guys can support the channel, whether that's programming, uh, whether that's gonna be the Patreon, all the links are gonna be down below in my link tree, so click that. You'll see all that good stuff. Before we sign off here, I do wanna say that I have a lot of grip genie stuff, pretty much all of it at this point. I'm not getting anything from them whatsoever. No kickback, no financial support. I just love their products. Juji's one of my really good friends. Love the company, what they stand for. But there's a ton of other companies out there you guys can choose from. When it comes to grip training, you can actually do a lot of this yourself by just finding different objects, creating them on your own. Uh, but if you have the extra coin, it's really great when you can support other companies that do a good job with this stuff. 
that's pretty much all I have, guys. I'm going to be putting out a video where I talk about starter pack when it comes to equipment that you can use for your grip and also different exercises for the accessory categories that we had just talked about. Some of my favorites, you can throw them into your training and get some freaking, just some gnarly forearms. Now, side note, don't get tattoos uh, because they make your just muscles and forearms look smaller because they're covered in ink. But I'm six foot two, about 250 to 255 pounds. And these things right here are 16.5 inches of just pure steel and sex appeal, baby. So I'll catch up with you guys next time. Stay on Lean Mean Strength Health Machine and have a great day. Just have a freaking great day. It's sunny out. You're blessed. You're able to watch this video. A lot of people can't watch this video. Get out there, train, get jacked, get swole, lift up heavy objects, and always say that you love your mother.